Well, you might have thought New Jersey had cleared all the hurdles necessary to get a cannabis industry off the ground, but a look at the Cannabis Regulatory Commission, that's the panel that's going to establish the guidelines and create the opportunities for social justice and equity in this industry. You look at it and you find that the CRC has zero representation from black men, the group most adversely affected by the so-called war on drugs. We start the program today with a discussion about the implications of that with the president of the NAACP New Jersey State Conference, Richard T. Smith. Mr. President, good to see you. Thanks for coming on with us. Good to see you, David. So there are really a couple of points being made here. One is about the letter of the law, right? The bill says, and I'm going to read from the bill, it says, at least one member shall be a state representative of a national organization or state branch of the national organization with the state admission of studying, advocating, or adjudicating against minority histor historical oppression, past and present discrimination, unemployment, poverty, and income equality, and other forms of social injustice or inequality. That seems almost specifically to describe the NAACP, for instance. Tell us about the letter you sent to the governor. I agree. Um, and, you know, it's a part of the law. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to see this as an intentional slight, David. I, I really don't want to see it that way. But I think sometimes decisions are made very, very swiftly uh, without giving those decisions the due diligence that the decision deserves. What's disturbing here, though, uh, David, is the fact that straight out the gate, uh, the very first opportunity those in power uh, had an opportunity to implement the law, they ignore the social justice aspects that we have been fighting for from the very, very beginning. You know, I said it seven years ago, and I say it again today. Uh, black New Jerseyans will not be the poster child providing the narrative as to why marijuana should be legalized. And then when it is, and the money and the, begin and the benefits begin to flow, uh, we are the forgotten entity and the powers that be get convenient amnesia. Uh, you know, and this will turn into ultimately what many had predicted to be uh, a white boy money grab. And the NAACP said it then, we say it now, it's not that kind of party. You know, this is, this is sweeping legislation. Uh, you know, it, it covers decriminalization, expungement, a tax structure that sends money back to communities uh, uh, most harmed. It's historic. It's the law, and the law needs to be followed. They got to fix it. You know, we don't need an apology. No apology necessary. Black people don't need no more apologies. What we need is safer neighborhoods. Uh, we need better schools, uh, a, a less punitive criminal justice system. We need better health care, jobs, and marijuana money can take us a long way down that road if the money goes to where it's supposed to go. And that regulatory commission is sitting there to ensure that the money goes where it's supposed to go. Uh, and we need to have a seat at that table and our voices need to be heard. And, and the letter that you sent to the governor asks him specifically to explain who on that commission currently fits the criteria we just talked about uh, from the law, right? That, that's correct, David. Um, you know, we want to know who on, on, on the commission at this point, you know, uh, fits that job description. And, and listen, thinking... no, offense, no offense to anyone who's on there, um, but we just don't feel that the law is being followed in this particular instance. I'm thinking that they're going to say that Diana Wainu, uh, who is beloved and respected by many people, she's the chairperson of the CRC. They're going to say, I think, that she's a former ACLU uh, of New Jersey policy director. Does that not qualify as representing a state branch of a national organization, et cetera? Diane is beloved, uh, beloved by many, uh, by us as well. Uh, you know, uh, we love Diana to life. But at the end of the day, Diana doesn't check that that box. Diana has been uh, a member of the Murphy administration now for some two years or more. Uh, formally, she worked for the ACLU, uh, but that in no way uh, checks the box when it comes to what the legislation says. I, I've heard from a number of people. Uh, close to the administration, they say that they feel the representation on the board is pretty diverse. Three females, one of them black, uh, one of them Latina, a Latino man, and, and a representative of organized labor. Are they wrong? 
No, I mean, there's diversity there. But it doesn't fit what the law says we were supposed to have. None of those individuals represent uh, a, a state uh, or national organization um, that's business is to fight for civil rights and social justice. Uh, and we should be clear too, right, that uh, part of your uh, contention is that there should be specifically black men on this board, yeah? Well, well, well David, you know, like I said, when the narrative was out there over the past seven years talking about how black people were three to three to four times more likely to be arrested for minor marijuana offenses. Listen, let's, let's be clear. We're talking about black men. Now it's okay for us to have our lives ruined, uh, to be victims of this uh, failed war on drugs. But now when we get an opportunity to, to, to sit on a commission to right the wrongs that have been done to our community, we can't get no black men. I mean, this is, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Uh, and this is not a hard fix. It's not a hard fix at all. Right. Uh, I don't realize how we have already encountered a stumbling block straight out the gate. Let's get this thing fixed and, 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 and keep the ball moving because we got a whole lot of other stuff that we need to uh, take time to be fighting for uh, in New Jersey besides a hiccup that is clearly covered uh, in the legislation that was passed and signed. I got just a few, uh, maybe a minute left. Um, your attorney, that is the attorney for the NAACP, the NAACP um, says that um, you will go to court to challenge this if necessary, yes? Yes, without a doubt. I mean, again, it's the law. The law must be followed. It's crystal clear. We don't feel as though anybody checks that box. Um, and, you know, if we have to go and and ask the judge what, what their opinion is. We're more than willing to do that. We don't want to do that. We don't want to have to do that. Like I said, this is an easy fix. Uh, you know, we have worked uh, with this governor uh, on, on many pieces of legislation, on many initiatives. Um, and uh, like I said, you know, I don't think that this is an intentional slight on his part. Um, he has indicated over the last couple of days that, you know, that we would be communicating. I'm still waiting to, to hear from it, um, but I'm hoping that we can resolve this uh, and move the ball forward because at the end of the day, we have to ensure that we stay true to our word and that this fight for us has always been about social justice and equal opportunity and righting the wrongs of those harms that have been done to our communities for years. All right, Richard T. Smith is the president of the NAACP New Jersey State Conference. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for coming on with us today. You too, David. I appreciate you. Thank you.